The shoe shine reden redemption. I saw that movie, The Hud Sucker Redemption. <laughs> that prison thing. Shimshaw. Sh Shamshai. Shimshaw. That movie you were in. That Shankshaw red Redelitz. It was the Shimshaw. Shaw Shimlaw. Shawshank. No, it's called the Shawshank Redemption. Shaw Shank. It's not that tough, folks. Word of mouth sells movies, and you can't sell what you can't say. We had cadres of people trying to come up with alternate titles. What are you going to call the movie? Conviction. Walls of Hope, I heard. Hope springs eternal. Zihuatanejo would have been a good title. Everyone would have remembered that. I would have kept the original Stephen King title, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. Do you know that while they were auditioning the movie, a transvestite sent in a picture and resume wanting to play Rita Hayworth? <laughs> I'd only ask three beers apiece for each of my co-workers. <laughs> co-workers. It done has affected people to the degree where they come up on the street and have to talk about it. I mean, all over the place, wherever I go. And uh, there's something about the movie that has touched a chord in people. A lot of people saying how important it was to them, how great it was to see a movie about friendship. A surprising number of men have said to me, the ending just grabbed them and shook them, you know? So now I find that very gratifying because this was a scene where two men came together like that. These two men had great love for each other, you know? I think the thing about the film that has touched people is really what touched me so deeply about the book. There's a very basic message that I think people really want to hear. Some people find it unforgivably corny, but I think most people want to hear it, and that is that we have value. Every human being has value, every human being has potential, and every human being has dignity. When you're cutting a film, you sit and look at it until it pleases you. Then you go and you sit and look at it with an audience and you watch for the time when the audience drifts off and you cut that scene. The intent was to show that he was not going to have any luck adjusting to the outside world. Restroom break, boss. You don't need to ask me every time you need to go take a piss. Just go. Understand? Forty years I've been asking permission to piss. I can't squeeze a drop without say so. Women too. That's the other thing. I forgot they were half the human race. There's women everywhere, every shape, every size. I find myself semi-hard most of the time, cursing myself for a dirty old man. I'm a lunatic, if you ask me. Must be the season. Nice 
truth to face. No way I'm going to make it on the outside. It was pulled out. It's an easy decision for me to make. Sometimes you have to... William children. Sometimes you have to murder your children. Morgan was very understanding. He knows that you have to look at the overall effect of the movie. Action! Oh no. Oh no. To me now, pal. Who? With Tim, what's interesting about him as an actor is that he doesn't show much. You kind of have to peer at him and figure out what's going on in this guy's mind. And that that's Andy Dufresne, and the man who is cerebral and and hidden in a lot of ways. There is a lot of truth to be found in animal behavior. Uh, and for me, going to the zoo, you can find out an awful lot about what it's like to be incarcerated. And looking in those animals' eyes and seeing the pacing wild animals, just this kind of caged intensity. They said, Tim Robbins is going to do the role. I thought, perfect, you, you can't get better. That. See, once in a while, Morgan tells the truth. <laughs> Andy Dufresne in the book was a short guy. <laughs> Andy Dufresne in the screenplay was a short guy. Andy Dufresne in the movie is six foot four and a half inches tall. Why? Because Tim Robbins was the best choice for the part. The character of Red, who in the book was a white Irishman, in the screenplay was a white Irishman, and in the movie was Morgan Freeman. My name's Red. Red. Why do they call you that? Maybe it's because I'm Irish. But these issues are just so secondary, ultimately, to who's the best actor for the role. Sometimes casting is like catching lightning in a bottle, and it has nothing to do with how good the actors are. It's alchemy. It's a chemical mix. Lost scene number two actually takes place earlier in the movie than lost scene number one. Tim's escape route has been discovered, and they have sent a young guard into the hole into which he went. Uh... Maybe he's still in there. And they lower him into the shaft to try and figure out where's Andy gone. And as he's being lowered, it's starting to smell worse and worse. Oh, shit! And then came the unmistakable sound of Rory Tremont losing his last few meals. The whole cell block heard it. I mean, it echoed. <laughs> right into solitary. Two week stretch. It's shit. It's shit. Oh my God, it's shit. <laughs> Read to the screams coming out of the hole and realized that his friend has made good. The reason the scene didn't work is not necessarily because there was anything wrong with the scene but because it didn't belong in the narrative flow of a movie. You don't want to take a two and a half minute detour down an air shaft with a character you've never met before. I miss that scene because it's so hard to shoot. I will be hoping that this letter finds you and finds you well. Your friend, Andy. It's really a movie about a man who learns how to hope. That's really what the movie's about. He learns how to hope by the example of another man who st against every honor to not forget how to hope. <laughs>